welcome students to one more session very important concept of your thermodynamics that is Hess law of constant heat summation so in the previous video I have taught you what actually is born Haber cycle isn't it right so let's uh, okay let me adjust the lens now it's fine so here uh, what we learn born Haber cycle we have uh, seen how is a, a solid crystal lattice of sodium chloride formed from its gaseous sodium ions isn't it right. now let's see what actually is this Hess law so now, first of all, we let us write uh, the definition of Hess law, and this step C step by step, right? Fine. So suppose if I take a uh, a chemical reaction, right? So in a chemical reaction, you have a series of steps, isn't it? So how should you write your Hess law definition? Just it is write it as if a chemical change, okay, can be made to take place. Okay, let us write the definition and first write and then understand. So for chemical change can be made to take place in two or more different ways we will see the ways also ways okay, whether in one step or more than two steps whether in one step or two or more steps okay suppose that particular reaction you're making other need to uh, form it one step or two more steps then what happens the amount of total the amount of total heat change the amount of total heat change is same okay so whether you're taking it in one step or you're taking it in two more steps the total heat change or the heat curve particular uh, transaction is the same no matter no matter by which method the change happens by which method the change is brought okay i've written a big paragraph change is brought about let's uh, brought about let's understand it in the form of an example so definition is this <coughs> so let me take an example start explaining this whole definition right so this also for basically this falls the first law of thermodynamics let's see now i have a substance a okay right so now what happens this substance has changed directly to z and there is a uh, with uh, the uh, q1 is this. what is q1 if i have to take here in this case delta h1 is equal to minus q1 what am i trying to explain here in this case q1 is a heat evolved minus f digit this is the amount of heat evolved when it is direct change suppose if you are taking the same reaction this is a direct step and that is what we have written if in a chemical change can be made by taking place in two or more different steps whether it is in one step or two or more steps the total energy change will be the same suppose the same thing if it occurs step by step how let me take this as direct let me take this as steps by step steps how a is getting converted to b plus q1 now, let us take this as delta h2 is equal to minus q2 q1 b converting to c this is q2 delta h2 is minus q2 c is getting now say from a to b b to c and c is converting to z because z is a final step now this is q3 <coughs> delta h3 is minus q3 now the total heat or the total energy change is q1 plus q2 plus q3 this is the total energy change which is equal to your q2 let us take this as q2 because earlier when direct one we have taken as q1 here we have taken as q2 q2 total heat evolution right <coughs> now according to Hess law what did he say so according to him he said q1 is equal to q2 because that is what we said if it continues in one step or if it continues in two or more steps 
with the total amount of heat evolved is the same in when i did directly it is given when i did step by step it is q2 he said both should be equal suppose let us assume q2 is greater than q1 let us assume right and if it is not to be not in this let us assume what is that let us assume if q2 is greater than q1 this is basically this is the condition now if this happens what then what do we do we are going to transform a to z how are we going to transform to stages and uh, re transforming directly back to a isn't it then what will happen there would be a gain of heat energy isn't it q2 minus q1 so by repeating this process you know this unlimited heat energy is developed in that isolated system because if you want q2 to be greater step by step you are doing this lot amount of energy which is created in that system what is that isolated system in isolated system there is no exchange with the outside uh, universe isn't it? it is between the system and surrounding system and surrounding it goes on inside that only so how is this predicted so what will happen now this will go against the first law basically we said this follows the first law but when this condition applies it will go against the first law hence what should we do q1 must be equal to q2 remember if this condition happens you know there's a lot amount of unlimited heat energy will be developed let's say this condition lot of unlimited heat energy develops in <clears throat> isolated system remember this so this will be against first law of thermodynamics isn't it yes so now remember <coughs> how should i predict this whole Hess law let us take an example right so i'm going to illustrate illustration of Hess law i'm going to illustrate that let's write illustration this is a general illustration illustration of Hess law Hess's law we call Hess's law let's see how first of all A is directly converting into Z by what the heat evolved is Q1 this is direct step if it occurs in different steps means different two or three steps how does this look A is converting into B that is heat evolved as q1 now b is converting into c heat evolved as q2 now c is converting into z heat evolved as q3 this is a general way now let us take in terms of an example that is for carbon dioxide how just see if i take carbon is combining with oxygen right yes now just see i'm doing step by step first this particular thing gets converted into this step. I'm talking about this one. What? Carbon dioxide in the products form carbon dioxide plus half oxygen. Here, delta H value is equal to minus 26.42 kilocalories per mole. <coughs> now, this is over. From here, this further converts into carbon dioxide all right okay so this particular thing during this process <coughs> here delta h value is minus 67.71 kilocalories per mole but normally if i see if this carbon plus oxygen direct step is what it is direct step is carbon plus oxygen plus carbon dioxide now if I take whether it is converting here directly then this delta H value is minus 94.05 kilocalorie per mole directly if it is converting this is 94.5 if it is converting this step now we'll do one thing we said q1 should be equal to q2 this is q1 this is q1 this is q2 let us see if I have to take the total heat that is delta H add everything minus 26.42 plus of minus 67.71 how much will i get minus into uh, plus into minus is minus <coughs> when i add i get an answer of minus 94.13 kilocalories per mole now observe carefully this is what this is q2 this is what q1 
Now observe q1 value is minus 94.05, q2 is minus 94.13. Almost both are similar. So hence Hess law has been tested experimentally and it is said to be true. It is 100 percent true. So experimentally it is proven. So q1 is almost equal to q2. So this is uh, this proves in the exam if they ask you, you need to write in this way. So you can write experimentally Hess law has been proven with this example. So thank you for watching students. I will be meeting you with the next video that is illustrations that is important examples of Hess law.